Bora TV. The world is thinking. When, um, when the papal nuncio to Ireland was called to the uh, Department of Foreign Affairs uh, to discuss um, the role of the Catholic Church and, the, and the, um, the abuses that had happened, he refused to go. He said that the Irish government had to go through the diplomatic channels, and they hadn't gone through the correct channels, so he didn't show up. So Enda Kenny makes that speech to the Vatican, and in a fit of uh, a tantrum, the Vatican recalls uh, the papal nuncio. And there's a picture of the papal nuncio getting into a limousine with a huge big ring on his finger, <laughs> about to leave for Dublin Airport, where he's been transferred. Great, great thing they have in the Catholic Church. Oh, there's a bit of problem there. Send him over there. <laughs> anyway, he was on his way to uh, Hungary, I think. But I, there was one tiny thing in there that just made me think. Before that fella left Ireland, having had the balls to say, no, I refuse to discuss this. No, I won't go and, and discuss it at governmental level. I'm above that. He made sure that every bishop in every diocese of Ireland collected 500 pounds to give him a go-away present. It struck me that who pays that 500 quid? We do. We gave this, this man... <laughs> the, we gave this man a going away present who had refused to interact, who had refused to speak, who had refused to address the issues. We gave him a big going away present and he's gone. Now there's a great deal of, of, of disquiet in Ireland. People are saying he shouldn't have spoken out like that. Kenny, Kenny shouldn't have said those things. He, why, why are we withdrawn from the Holy See? The Holy See has a political presence. We're doing ourselves damage. There's a lot of people who object to Enda Kenny speaking out. There's a lot of people who think that the, uh, the papal nuncio should not have been uh, told to go because we're still ambivalent about the church. Because as Manic said, we are still uh, you know, indoctrinated and afraid to a great extent about you know, n um, speaking up to these faceless uh, authoritarian figures who have the power that we've observed. Uh, you know, the Jesuits used to say, give me a child till he's seven and he's ours for life. And, and they meant that. Because be, the first thing you learn, as it says in the play, the first thing you learn as a Catholic child is that you are born with the stain of original sin on your soul. So no matter, w and there's a great line in the play where he says, they put them in a washing machine to make their souls clean. Well, I remember as a child saying, what's original, what, what's, what's a stain on my soul? And I used to think my soul was a kind of a shoe. That's the way I thought of it. And I said, well, there's a shoe inside me. It's got a big stain on it. How do I get the stain off the shoe? And then I was told that actually the reason for the stain on my soul and the reason I might go to hell was because once a very long time ago, there was a man and a woman in a garden and the man said to the woman, go over to that tree and take a bite out of the apple. It wasn't the man, it was the woman, of course, who was responsible <laughs> for, for everything. If she hadn't eaten the apple, you know, n none of this would be going on. Yeah. Anyway, there was a talking snake involved. <laughs> now, this is what we're asked to believe. And then we come to the situation where we're asked to believe that God, God is three people in one people, in one person. And he was conceived without sex. So all that is before you're seven years old. <laughs> so you grow up with this idea, as I was told, women are the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's what they are. They don't have sexual thoughts. They are pure temples of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, so on and so forth, you know what I mean? <laughs> but just one last thing to say to that, uh, to the, uh, add to that one, what she said. Um, I grew up believing that the church was a temple of love. I believed that the church was all about love. What kind of a church denies the one thing that is the human expression of the deepest love, which is sex, to its own members and tells them that they cannot have a relationship, a physical relationship, or indeed any kind of a relationship with the opposite sex?
celibacy, which was a man-made invention. Christ didn't go around on a boat saying priests have to be, you know, um, anyway, you know the score. 